Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Come on, see, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. I am excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in God's house. I am excited to be in the house of the Lord. Say, it pays to serve God. It, it pays to serve Jesus. Say, Jesus is Lord of my life. Uh, he is my life. Say, he is my song. Saying he is my peace. Say, he is my exceeding reward. Say, in him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. Say, without him I can do nothing. I am what it says I am. Come on. Can we rise up on our feet for just a minute? I am what God says I am. I have what God says I have. I am who God says I am. Nothing can stop me. I'm in authority. I'm in dominion. No force in hell can stop me. I walk in authority. It is well with my soul. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. I cannot be stopped. I cannot be in that. Christ is in me. And Christ in me is the hope of glory. I cannot be deceived. Deception cannot work in my life. Every manipulation of witchcraft, it cannot work in my family because we are the type that walk on water. I cannot be manipulated. Demons cannot manipulate me because I sit in the place of authority. My mind is free from every demonic manipulation. My mind is free of lies on deception of the enemy in the name of jesus i am in authority today and nothing can stop that i have understanding i have illumination my mind is illuminated today i prosper in my spirit my soul mind will emotions and my body there's prosperity for added to it this morning in the name of jesus sit 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 get get a seat and cross your leg so this everyone can know you're in authority let him know you're in authority hallelujah cross your leg let him know you're in the authority hallelujah glory to god amen and amen we all welcome this morning i believe we've had uh, a great week if it hasn't been it's going to be great this morning if you join us anywhere this morning i'd like to welcome you to watchman fellowship center a place by God, a place of rest, a place of intimacy with God, a place of encounter with Jesus Christ and God's lighthouse. So we'd like to welcome you today and uh, we believe your time with us will be a blessing. You'll be blessed tremendously by the word of the Lord. The word of God changes men. It's only the word of God that can change the man. Not ideas, but the word. Um... I want to say this to you that don't be confused by what is going on around the world and different things around our world today. Um, just different things happening. You know, there's so many prophecies today. People don't even read their Bible no more now. They just follow prophecies. They just follow, ah, uh, you know, this is about that election and that, that about that election. And my only thing that I'm saying to people is stay in God. Pray about, pray, pray for the U.S., but don't get distracted. God is our source. No man can deliver another without God. So get that understand, get, get that clear, I understand it. Don't be carried away by all this wave of deception that is going on. I don't want you to be carried away by it. There's people whose life is ruled by politics. Let me tell you something. This word is no longer ruling other people's, many people's lives. The media, they have subjected their life to media. The word of God is no longer Lord. Don't do it. Don't do it. The Bible talks about a great falling away. People are already falling away. They don't even know it. People are already falling away. They don't even have an idea. Come on, say with me. I will not fall away. I will not join the crowd. By the way, where's your guest? You didn't preach Jesus this week. You didn't invite somebody. Come on. 
Invite somebody. Tell someone about Jesus. Don't be ashamed of him. He died for you. It's the least you can do. In Jesus' name. Mighty Holy Ghost, we thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for speaking to us again this morning. Because our lives are changing. Our lives are changing. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm cheering with us this morning about reigning in life. And uh, you can also call it seeking God and grow, seeking God and growing rightly. But you can leave it at reigning in life. Reigning in life. Reigning. 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 Reigning in life. Romans 5.17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they will receive abund the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. <laughs> They will receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. I want to tell you this morning, child of God, you're going to need to reign in life. The Lord says that you receive the abundance of grace, so you should reign in life. But I want to show you why a lot of people are not reigning and why a lot of people will not reign if things don't change. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 16. Look at what it says. Woe to thee, O land, when the king, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning, blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of the nobles, and thy princes eat in due season. Watch, what it tells you the purpose of food. Watch, watch next verse for strength and not for drunkenness. So, the purpose of food is for strength. That's, what, that's the purpose of food. He said, Woe unto thee, O Lord, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Okay. Now, go to Romans. Not Romans, actually. Galatians 4. Galatians 4, verse 1. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But, is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Okay, let's go back to verse 1. I say that the heir, the guy that takes over the inheritance of his father, as long as he is a child, mm, Holy Ghost, give us the understanding today. He differed nothing from a servant. Who's a servant? A slave. You know who a slave is? A servant? Somebody that has no right to the inheritance. So, so your daddy has left you 10 million pounds. He's 98 years old, whatever age now, he passed away. Now, the Bible is telling us, you know, in, this, in our world today, there are people who leave inheritance for their children, and they say now, their calculation, their understanding of adulthood is, when she gets, when he gets to age 21, you should bequeath that wealth to her. I get what I'm saying now. So, she should take over that wealth. She should take over the company at the age of 21. Now, when you are at age 10, you can't take it. But it's yours. Guess what? You are age 15. You are broke. You can't take the money. You are age 17. You are broke. You can't take the money. You are age 18. You are broke. You can't take the money. You are 19. You are broke. You can't take the money. You are 20. You are broke. You can't take the money. You are 20. The year you turn 21. You are still broke, but it's two weeks to your birthday. They still can't give it to you. Do you know why? It says you, cause you, according to their calculation, their measurement is 21 or 27. You know, for toxic. The Bible says in this scripture, as long as he is a child, in other words, as long as he's under age, he cannot take the inheritance. Why? Because he is a child. Mm -hmm. And the scripture is saying to you that woe to the land whose king is a child. Whose king is a child is not mature. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So as long as he's not mature, he said, Woe to the land. Your king is a child. 
Your king is a child. Your ruler is a child. He behaves like a baby. Say woe unto you. Oh, it's bad for that country. When your, your, your king is a child, your president thinks like a child. Your president behaves like a child. Say no more, but you, child. Listen. He says, as long as he's a child, he's no different from a slave. What did I just explain to you now? That even though you own everything, you are no different from the man that does not own anything as long as you are at that age. Because what is the difference between you and the servant in the house if you don't have access to what is yours? That's what that scripture is saying. That this is yours, but you don't have access. Do you know why? Because you are a child. Do you know where this gets interesting? In the world, they fix a certain age for it. And they don't care whether, like Michael Jackson, for example, I think the age he fixed for his children was 21. Now, he's no, he, do, he doesn't care whether or not the child is, whether the 21 year old son of his or daughter thinks like a, 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 a child of seven or eight, it doesn't matter. As long as he's, he's concerned at 21, she's fine. But guess what? That is this world. And in this world, their measurement is at 21, you should be able to handle it. But guess what? There are people at 45 who still can't handle it. There are people at 40, at 60 who still can't handle it, who still think like a child. I've seen a few. <laughs> but I'm telling you now, as long as he's a child, he can't take it. Why? Because it's a child. And as long as you're a child, here is the measurement. Now, they can't give it to you because you messed it up. At 21, it gets it. Okay? That is this word. In the kingdom of God, it's different. Why? Because it's not about age. It's about spiritual maturity. People of God, we've got what? Reign in life. Come on, say, I'm reigning in life. Nothing will stop me from reigning. But I want to show us if you think this morning that's going to help us. Second, Second Timothy. I needed to show, establish that foundation because of what we're about to get into right now. Because this is the reason why many people don't reign. And if you are going to reign in life, if you don't want to be uh, to stay on the same spot, listen to me. See, with God, you can stay on the same spot for 10 years until you learn the right lessons. Learn it on time. Listen, God is not moved by time. You know, listen, the timeless zone. It is you that need time. Oh, I have to be there in this time. It is you. That's your own world. But until you learn it right, God can't let you go to, the, you can't go to the next level. So who's stopping you from going to the next level? God? No, it's you. Come on, see, I'm going to the next level. Because I'm going to do all that's required. Now watch this now. Second, Second Timothy 4. Let's start from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all this long sovereign and doctrine. Verse 3. For the time will come, watch this now, when they will not endure sound doctrine. What is it call it? Sound doctrine. What is a sound doctrine? Doctrine that is sound. Doctrine that is complete. What is a doctrine? Doctrine is a set of teachings. Teachings that are complete, that are adequate. When you, when you talk about sound doctrine, it means balanced diet. Meaning that it's not lacking in protein. It's not lacking in vitamins. It's not lacking in carbohydrate. It's not lacking in any of the nutrients. It's complete. That is sound doctrine. Because what is messing people up today in their work with God is a one-sided doctrine. They hear that, okay, now, um, okay, as long as me and that, girl you know we, we like each other i've talked to her about marrying her uh, as long as you know we are christians and we are we are speaking in tongues kalaman talaba we can stay in the, we can sleep in the same house and we can sleep in the same bed that well you have received an evil doctrine because that's not from god if you are engaged to somebody to be married you should not be in the same house you could you cannot be because when if you have if someone has endorsed that to you you have received what is called 
an evil doctrine. It's not from God. You see now. But there's many places where that is done. And I'm telling you, it's wrong. So now, if you are in a place where, you, you, where, where that is endorsed, you have not been preached a sound doctrine. That's what it's saying. He said, a time will come when people will no longer endure sound doctrine. For the sake of views, they will ignore certain things. For the sake of Ah, uh, you know, we got to, uh, we don't want to talk about hell. We don't want to talk about sanctification. We don't want to talk about, you know, growing the things of God because you, you, you should be selling ice cream if that's what you want to be doing. You should be selling ice cream. If it's about pleasing people, you should be what, selling what ice cream. But now, he said, people will not endure that. Watch what now. He said, but after their own lusts, mm, they shall eat to themselves. What? Teachers having itching ears. What does that mean? They will gather many teachers that tell them what they want to hear. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm going to go that. Oh, oh, I'm going to. Oh, I want to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Itching ears. Meaning, you want to hear. There is a certain thing you want to hear. Whenever you come to a point where you start doing this, you got that to yourself. People that support what you're doing. That is witchcraft. You are practicing black arts. You are still practicing witchcraft. Because now you are contrary, you are con you beginning to manipulate what you hear. No, 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 no. Flip that station. That guy is raw. If, if you want to grow. Mm, uh -huh. But you know yourself. There are certain people, if you listen to them, you know that it's the truth. If I listen to him, he will tell me the truth. I remember one time a guy said to me, he said, you know what, I'm, I'm coming because I know you will give me an objective opinion. Mm, that's what you give. But, but, but you see, but he said, people will gather what? Teachers having itching ears. What they want to hear. As long as I'm a child of God, I can walk in malice with you. I don't have to talk with you. Uh, no, I don't talk to that brother. Oh, that sister, no. Uh, no, no, I'm no, I don't get along with her. When you live like that, you cannot walk in love and live like that. The Bible is clear. I don't care about your culture. You, you walk like that, you're not walking with God. No, you can't walk with God and walk in malice. You can't. You can't walk with God and walk in unforgiveness. You can't walk with God and walk in unforgiveness and say, no, I'm not. Oh, uh, no. That one, me and her don't get along and that's about it. I don't want to hear nothing again. You're not walking with God. You're walking with yourself. But the Bible says people will get that to themselves. Teachers having itching ears. People that tell, give you a bit of sugar. But say, I am growing in my spirit. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Did you see that? Not a demon. They will turn their ears from the truth. Anything that corrects the rebukes. Because we can all hear God. I can, I can hear God for myself. But everything that God tells you about yourself is always sweet. If ever, if ever God speaks to you every time and it doesn't correct you, you are not hearing from the Holy Ghost. You are hearing from yourself. It's not from the spirit of truth. If the spirit of truth will speak to you, it will correct you. It will reprove you. Listen to me. I have been reproved. One time, years ago, what year now? Maybe year 2000 or something. I was going to a meeting. I was late. I was late. Two th year 2000. I was going to a meeting in the car. And I was late. I was the leader. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, you are not a good leader. And the people, are, people don't want to hear that. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. He said, you are not a good leader. Oh, Holy Ghost doesn't say that. Okay. I don't know the Holy Ghost you have. But the one that I have, that's what it says. And I thank God for where I am today because... I'm listening. He says this one. He, that's what he told me. I don't share them. But that because the Holy Spirit will correct you. It doesn't matter. I can do what I want. He, the Holy Ghost, he, he, if it's the spirit of two, he will correct and say, ah, sister, yeah, brother, you know this one. Why? But but if imagine if I told myself, ah no, it doesn't matter anyway. No, it does matter. Because he knows where you are going tomorrow. And that's why he's correcting you today. Someone say amen. Now, it says, from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. <laughs> what is fables? Watch this now. 
What he said they will be turned to fables. Do you know what the fable is? It's like supposed secrets. In the Greek, it means also falsehood. It means an invention. Meaning they will invent stuff. So they will turn to places where people invent stuff. I want to share some deep truth with you this morning. So uh, I, I've got this deep revelation. The Bible says fables. Watch this now. It means anything founded on lies. It, it, it's lies. And people have got anything. So anything founded on lies will not end well. Do you know behind don't many don't tell it. Do you know so many people don't tell it. Don't tell it. Don't tell it. Don't tell it. Let me tell you something. Your life will be a quagmire of confusion. Don't tell it. Don't tell it. Don't tell it. I'm telling you, by the time you'll be so messed up, you don't... I, I don't know what else not to say now because it's not like I want to reveal pussy, but it's too much lies now. It's, when, when, if there's too much, don't tell it. There's lies in it. Believe it, I'm telling you. There's lies in the child of God. If there's too much, don't tell... Oh, don't, 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 don't. But please understand, people of God, I want to tell you today, that you're growing. That you are growing. That the devil is a liar. Come on, see, I'm growing. Say with me, I'm not in the company that we just read. <laughs> I'm not in that company. No! <laughs> I'm not in that company in the name of Jesus. But the Bible said, as long as it's a hair, it doesn't differ from a slave. Why? Because it's no different. Because he doesn't have access. Even though he's the Lord of everything, he, he, he has, he's supposed to have rulership over it but as long as a child the word there means in the word child there means nepio someone that doesn't know how to talk and we want to fix that this morning we want to fix it this morning please understand people of god everything grows everything grows including cancer when you have a child your first focus is the growth of that child Mothers in here understand this that when your baby, when you have a child, you are concerned about breast milk. If you can't breastfeed or something is wrong, there you make sure you get all the adequate stuff that the child needs to feed on. Why? Because you are concerned about the growth of that child. And the the Lord is the same thing. This is why God will direct you to certain churches. Why? This is you, that's the purpose. They will say ah, many churches here yeah, because we need to have the right ones, because there are places where you will not grow. There are places where you will not hear sound doctrine. There are places where you will not hear the truth. There are places where you will never hear things like this. All they tell you is about sports and Man United, you know, and, and, and election, U.S. and the election. What, 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 what's that about? What, what are we doing? Is that what Jesus sent you? You talk about U.S. Like you talk about all the elections. Is that, is that what will prepare people for the rapture? Is that what will prepare people to reign in life? No. You got to preach the word of God. Anywhere where Jesus Christ is not presented to you, avoid it. And anybody whose focus is not Jesus Christ, avoid them. I'm telling you, this, this is what the Bible says now. And I'm saying to you now, your growth is very, very what important. And your growth is primary. First Peter 2, 2, 2, 2 it says, a new, first, first Peter 2, 2, yeah. He says, as newborn babes, I want to get that right now. He said, desire the sincere meek of the word of God that you what? May grow thereby. Yes, First Peter 2, 2, that's what it says. The Bible says in Luke 2, 52, that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. Now, as a child, Jesus grew in wisdom and also grew in stature. What is that? He grew mentally and he grew physically. He was growing his physical features. He was growing as a child. He was growing his body. His nails were growing. His legs were growing. He was growing taller. And in wisdom, he was no longer talking like a babe. He goes to a level. Ah, no, he's grown now. So that's what the Bible says. He grew in wisdom and in stature. And he grew in favor with God and man. Say, I'm growing in favor with God and man. When you read in Luke 180, the Bible says concerning John the Baptist, the child walks strong in spirit. And was in the wilderness on the day of his showing. That's in Luke 1 verse 80. Why is he saying that? He's trying to show you that these people, they went through all the stages of growth. They grow to mentally. Why is, they, why is God referring to the growth of Jesus? So that you will not assume that Jesus got to where he was as a son of God overnight. No, he grew into it. He grew into it. And as a child of God, you must grow. And remember, this growth is in phases. There is a path of growth that is eating. But eventually, it must show. 
eventually it must be revealed. The better part of a woman's pregnancy is revealed. If you're a woman and you are pregnant for nine months, you, you know the truth that the better part of that pregnancy, people see it. The one that is concealed, maybe about two months, maybe, or three months, if you, you don't have a big stomach or something. But the better part of it, six months, people can see it for six months. What does that mean? Isaiah 37 verse 31, he said the remnant that is left he said they will they will take root downwards and they will bear fruit upward god is saying you should take root downwards there is a level in your growth that it's eating nobody sees that you're growing but something is changing as a lady as a girl you're changing it gets to a level there's ah puberty ah, ah this girl now is beginning ah adulthood is coming this Certain features have been seen, and as a man is the same. You know, when when we when were young and uh, in high school, we were buying. You know, my friends would buy spirits. You know, <laughs> not the one that they drink now, because they want their mustache. They want their mustache, so they would put it on. Oh, because people say if you put this thing on, it let mustache come out. So they were using it. But guess what now? Now, there's mustache that you're shaving everywhere. You're tired of it. I don't want this thing no more. But listen now. They want, the young don't, can't wait to grow. And the ones that are grown want to be young again. That's the, this is the confusion now. But what I'm trying to establish you is growth. So that you understand there's a level in your growth that is concealed. Nobody sees it. But let me tell you something. Growth cannot be hidden for too long. Child of God, if you are growing, it will be obvious. If you are growing in your mind, it will be obvious. It cannot be hidden for too long. First Timothy 4 verse 15 says that your profiting may appear to all. Listen, it must get to a point. It must be obvious here while you're growing. It must be obvious that you're growing prosperity. It must be obvious. It is seen on you. Come on now. There is a way she talks. There is a way it talks. Ah, my goodness. That sister is growing. That brother is growing because something is changing. There's a transfiguration. Something is happening to her. Uh, It it doesn't react like that no more. It it, it talks different. Whenever you talk to her about two minutes, she scolded the scripture. What is happening? There is growth that is happening. When you talk to her, you can sense that she's, she's growing in her grammar. She's growing in the way she talks and does this and that because why it gets to a level that growth becomes obvious growth becomes obvious you can't hide grow too long you can't you can't hide but what is wrong with the church and why are many not growing in their work with god why are many not growing in their work with god or you can personalize it why are you not growing as you should grow in your work with god why i want to tell you the why today the lord said something to me he spoke he said to tell you the the body of Christ to go back to your first love, child of God. Go back to your first love, return to your first love. The Lord said to me, Say, The present way that you are seeking God is unacceptable. The present way that you're seeking the Lord is unacceptable, it can no longer be accepted no more. This way that there's hypocrisy in, in the way you're seeking God is you're seeking God this time has become hypocritical. You are not seeking God to grow. You are not seeking God intentionally because of love. And it's telling me to tell you, body of Christ, it is time for you to grow. Because, listen to me, we've got to correct the systemic error. You know, when you say something is systemic, it is generic. And this is what is stopping the revival we're talking about. There's a systemic error in the body. It's a systemic error. Systemic. Systemic error. Systemic error is eating into the body. But someone got to tell the truth. What is stopping growth? Why? Listen, I can tell you the formulas. I can tell you, listen, I have shown you here how to study the Bible. I have shown you here verse study, chapter study, personality study. I have shown you different ways to study the Bible. I have shown you. I have shown you different ways. I have have broken down how to pray. But why is your prayer life still unfruitful? Why is your time with the word of God still unfruitful? I want to show you why. Why? Because you can know, I, I, I know the steps of you know, studying scripture. But why? What is going on? What is wrong? I want to show you. Our convictions in the church, in the body of Christ, like, our convictions are wrong. Convictions. Your personal convictions. 
what you accept to be true, what you accept to be right. During the lockdown, a man was asked, why did you not shut down your church? This was in the U.S. And they were quoting some other places. Look at over there. Look at over there. They've shut it down. He said it's conviction. It's what they believe to be right. Our convictions are wrong, people of God. And your convictions are a product of the information you have received and garnered over time from wherever. It could be media. It could be some other people. Listen, your convictions, what makes it up? What makes up your conviction? Listen, whenever you went to the examination hall and you began to write, ah, you were writing, you were writing, you were writing, you asked for extra papers. Listen, you asked for extra papers to write. And at the end of the day, you submitted, you said, yeah, come on now. Guess what your result was? You barely made it. 55. With all that writing? With all that writing? <laughs> With all that writing. I have been, I have been an example of where I was writing and somebody, I, I was so, um, I was so, uh, what was the word now? What's the word? I was, I was writing the exam all and I was so in shock when I saw another person. I'm, I'm thinking, is it, is it different from what we're writing? And extra papers, extra papers, extra shit, extra shit, extra shit, and extra, extra. And, and I, and I kind of went back, you know, you, you went back to the questions. Was it, was it, what was it? I, I, I want to be sure, we, we, you know, I, I, I checked the question again. And at the end of the day, what they had was 55. You know, and we had, you know, I asked us, but here's what I'm saying. You came out of that hall. You were convinced that what you wrote was right. But you see, at 55. The man, the brother, your friend that failed at 32. She or he wrote something and she was convinced that what she wrote was right. Isn't that right? But why did you fail? Was, was your, it means what you were convinced was right was wrong. That's why you failed. <laughs> What you wrote? What you were? You said no. Ah, but but what what what? Okay. Oh, the teacher doesn't like me. They sent you feedbacks. You saw what you wrote, and you compared it to what the teacher said should be right. And listen to me now. You went to check the text. Ah, ah, yeah, okay, yeah, I was in the wrong. What happened? Your convictions were wrong. What you accepted to be right was wrong. This is why people don't have hundred percent. It's because you are convinced of what you are writing. But what you are writing is your convictions are wrong. And that's the reason for failure. Now, I'm saying we can get the convictions right. How? Through the word of God. Watch this. Galatians 3. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 3. Look at what these people said. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Verse 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Look at what is happening to you now. Look at this. The Galatian church started in the spirit. Everything. I have to pray about it. Suddenly, the Bible says, in, if you read further, Paul said you were willing to pull out your eyes you, you, because you were that committed to the gospel. You were that committed to your growth. He was saying to this church, they were bewitched. Can the child of God be bewitched? <laughs> I thought you said that a man only in Christ cannot be under a curse. Yes. But you, but you can be bewitched. How? When you believe a lie. That's the way you can be bewitched. When you believe a lie, you can be bewitched. When you are deceived, you can be bewitched. Listen. 
You should not have to go to church all the time. You can join online. Hebrews 10.25. Go to Hebrews 10.25. Look at what it says. There's no online in that one there. Hebrews 10. Look at what it says. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So when you see somebody who is not in the house of God, what is the scripture saying? Are they right not being the house of God? Yes or no? Yes or no? I'm asking for your answer now. Are they right to not be in the house of God? No. Is he right? No. Because the scripture says, because it's either you want to go with what they said or you want to believe God. God said, listen, no excuses enough. The, the, that's what the word of God says. And I'm going with the word. That's what the word says. And the word of God is truth. Now, you can justify it. You can say, no, no, but no. The word of God, you, you, you can't be bigger and higher than the word of God. That's what the word says. Online is better. Online is not better because the purpose of online church and TV is to speak to people who don't know the purpose of church yet. It's to reach people who, are, who don't believe yet. It's not for believers. That's not the purpose of online church. If online church, online service has made you comfortable to sit at home, you have, you have not been told the truth. It's for people who don't yet know the Lord. That, those are the people we are trying to reach online. And for you, that when you hear this, you're writing things that there may be things you miss so that you can catch up. You can go and listen again and again because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing. And that's how you grow. That's how you grow when the things of God. I'm talking about convictions now. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't have to be in church. I, I can be online. I'm showing you convictions now why there's no growth. I will serve God if it's convenient. If your service of God carries an if, if your service to God is subjunctive, if your service to God is conditional, your convictions are wrong. If I'm not walking, Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather together my saints, those who have made a covenant with me by what? Sacrifice. Meaning, your service to God will carry sacrifice. If your service to God it's convenient. You will not grow. Do you know for you to get coffee, real coffee, or tea, you have to put the tea bag in the what? Hot water. Why does the, all the juice come out in hot water? Pressure. There's people, many, most people function effective under pressure. I have yet to see somebody who doesn't do well under pressure. Everybody does under pressure. Why? Because you see, man, if you don't put pressure on man, people will not grow. Sacrifice. I will serve God when it's convenient. Someone says family is first. God is first. It's not family. God is first. I need somebody who said to me one time, he said, I used to burn for the Lord. But, you know, uh, me and my wife, my wife kind of thought, ah, you know, the way you're going is affecting this marriage. Be I said, y what y the mistake you made is that you didn't have somebody to tutor you and educate you. When you received salvation and you were born in for the law, he said, I want to be never self and everything. But guess what? The same person, every time, is always praying about dryness, dryness, dryness. Why? Why? Because he did not understand it. That your service to God, your going to church is part of your service to God. So he says, oh, fam so, so when you go for that and you say, no, it's, fam it's not family first, it's God first. I said, somebody did not sit you down to school you in how to handle it. What should have happened is you should have, both of you should have, been, you should have carried that along and said, come on, we got to go because this love is burning. And guess what? He didn't do that. He went, ah, maybe I, I, I need to stay with the soul. When she's service, she's sit, he's sitting at home. And guess what? His love died died his love for God completely it still goes but I just noticed that it was dryness 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 all the time why I'm telling you why now God is first people don't know how to separate it if God is first but, but that's church yeah I know it's church it's part of your service to God 
It's part of the way you, you know what Paul, what did David say? I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than join the tents of wickedness. I would rather be a doorkeeper. He's even talking about service to God. He's not even just talking about going to church alone now. It's God first. And that involves going to church. Because how can you tell me God is first? How? How? You are at home all the time. Ah, you, how, can, how can people know? That's the Bible. That, that's the godliness that the scripture is talking about in First Peter. It says, "Out to your faith, godliness. That godliness is piety. Is the godliness that people see. Has it happened to you when they saw you? Ah, let's say you didn't go to church. I don't know if it's happened to you. I said, sister, what happened to you today? This is not unbelievers. They say, you didn't go to church. Why? Why did they say that? Because they had seen you going all the time. So th this time they knew every Wednesday. Oh, they knew. Oh, that sister. Oh, oh. She doesn't joke with that. Oh, it doesn't joke with that. Because those are the ways you grow. Not by ignoring those things now. It's first. If you're asked, how, how was church? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about convictions now. How was church today? Oh, the praise was powerful. And you were sleeping throughout the preaching of the word. You, have, you, you didn't attend service. Because the most important part of, the, of any, any service is the word of God. You jumped up and down. You, you, you ran and like we're dancing today. Amazing time of praise. God bless you guys. God bless you. But listen, amazing time of praise and the drama. Whoa, what, I'm telling you, 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 you're going higher. Amen. We need, we need to change, change the drums now. Get, get a better one. But, but you see now. If all we came here and all we, we danced and if everything, great. But during the time of the word, you were sleeping and dozing. You missed the service. It's the truth. Because the most important part of the service is the word. And guess what? I, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to tell you things I've seen in my, in my time. In my little life, things I've seen. During the service, you will see people getting other people's attention. Uh, see that. Because they wanted to miss what the pastor is. Satan wanted to miss it. He's trying to get your attention. Uh, 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 something is eating them hard. Did you, uh, uh, what, 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 why did you not uh, why did you not fool me this week? They've had they've been together before the service. She, he didn't ask that question, but uh, it was during service. Why did you not phone as you promised last week? Distractions. Secondly. Those things I mentioned are, are convictions. Some of the convictions. You, you know some of them that I don't know. But they are wrong. Because the word of God doesn't support them. Let me give you another one. Why we are not growing. And why the church. What is wrong with the church. And why people are not growing their work. I said the, your conviction is wrong. And I give you a few of them. The second thing is our seeking is wrong. The way we seek God is wrong. The way we seek the Lord is wrong. If the seeking is wrong, everything will be wrong. I'm telling you now. If you prepare for your exams a week before, if you made it this semester, you made it second semester, third semester, first year, second year, you won't go very far before you are, that thing catches, failure catches up with you. You know why? You cannot survive on preparing for your exams it gets to a level it's one week and not one week two weeks is not enough you need time i had to prepare our seeking is wrong psalms 42 verse 1 to 2 I'm, I'm i'm saying some stuff this morning now come on say amen somebody psalms what what what's this now to the to, to the chief musician master for the sons of Korah, as the heart panted after the water Brook so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for thee, for the living, hmm, for God. For the living God, when shall I come to appear? When shall I come and appear before God? Is God water? Is God physical water? But he's saying, my soul is thirsting for thee. What is this? Look at Psalm 63. Let's look at Psalm 63. A son of David, when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Oh God, thou art my God. Watch this. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land. Where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Hmm. Hallelujah. 
Lord, deliver the church from bewitchment. Deliver the church from the bewitchment of the devil, I pray this morning. Deliver the church. Someone said, we have cars, we have houses, but we have no weight, no stature in the spirit. <laughs> That's what someone said. That is why someone can have pain in their body for years and not be healed. What is wrong? God is not wicked. It's not God. God doesn't put pain on people. God does not put infirmity on people because he's a good God. If you make a product, you want the best of that product. You are the crux of his product. The Bible calls you a masterpiece. God is not the one who put the sickness on you. Every morning, tired. My goodness. When I did night shifts and I, I, I work hours, I've done 16 nights back to back. I've, listen, I've, do, I've done crazy kind of work. And I'm still preaching. Morning and evening service. All through the week. And I'm still doing videos. And someone says, oh, you know, I'm just, I just have this pain. My goodness. The Lord is my healer. What is wrong? Our seeking is wrong. The way we have been taught to seek the Lord is wrong. There's two types of seeking I want to talk about this morning. Oh, Lord. Help your church. Help us, Lord. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Our heart is not right, people of God. Ah, Lord, help us to get our heart right. Our heart is not right. I'm telling you, our heart is not right. Peter says to that man, he said, your heart is not right with God. He said, because you are in the gall of bitterness. You are in the gall of bitterness. Acts 8 verse 20. Oh, your heart must pant after Jesus. Your heart must pant after Jesus. It's not the work that is your problem. No. Our seeking and our understanding of seeking God is wrong. Seeking when it's convenient. No. No. You have been told. You have been told. David said, my, he, says, he says, my soul must be thirsty. Listen. Your soul must be thirsty and your flesh must be longing. That's the high level. It's not lonely that uh, it's not that his soul is thirsty for God. His flesh cannot miss that out on it. I'm telling you, when I was in university, I used to bring my pastor's note to school. I'm telling you. Because it was a different city. I would bring it. I studied before my notes. And I got wiser. I used to be in two services. It was my passion. It's not compulsory. It, I'm just telling you. After the first survey, I wait for the second one. It didn't affect my academics. People say, uh, I, I stayed for, if, if there was 10 services I was reading to stay for, it didn't affect anything. Because of, I just, I wanted to get to a level in my group with God. I want to crack bones. I want to go to where the lions well has not trodden. That's where I want to go in my work with God. I don't know what you've been told how to seek God. You have been told, seek God, but don't lose your mind. Don't lose your mind. See God, don't lose your mind. Don't, don't join those people. They, they've lost their mind. Oh, Paul said, I am willing. Paul was like, I'm not only willing to lose my mind. I want to lose my life. Why? Because he is my life. Those who try to save their life will lose it. And those who are after, you know, I don't care. The Bible said they will save it. What category are you? Paul says, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Hallelujah. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Paul says, I am saved, but I want to know him. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him. Paul says, I don't want just, I don't just want to know the Lord. He says, I want to go to another level. He said, I want to go to another level in my walk with God. What is the level? He said, it's a level where I want to understand what it meant for Jesus to have died. Listen, because of that desire, that is why we have Christianity today. If you don't know, I'm telling you now. We have, come on, listen, we have Christianity today because of that desire. Why? Nobody told us about what happened in the grave. Nobody told us until Paul had this desire. Nobody told us what happened after because everybody wrote about Jesus up until death. 
But what happened in death? What happened in death after he was buried? What happened? What happened after the cross? Nobody told us about it except Paul. And it came out of this desire. Philippians 3 verse 10. That's where the desire came. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sovereign be made conformable unto his death. Be made conformable. What is that? He was saying, I want to know what it felt, what it was, what happened in death when Jesus died and rose again. I want to know what happened. Because everybody, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they wrote up until the, the life of Jesus up until he died. Nobody told what happened in the grave. The Bible says in Acts 2 24, for death could not hold him down. It was impossible that the pangs of death should hold him. What happened in the grave? Who told us, Paul? We didn't know. But because of this desire, by revelation, the Lord took him there and showed him what happened in the grave. How that the demons wanted to hold Jesus down and he shook them off of his body. And the Bible says he shook them off of his body, took the key of death and of hell from, from Satan. That happened in the grave, but he didn't know. The man that told us is Paul. How was he able to tell us? Because he went there by revelation. He went to hell by revelation. Paul, Peter was able to say only so little. In 1 Peter 1, 12, he said, he went and preached unto the prisoners in prison. Did you know that, did you know that Abraham and all of them were in prison? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Where did you think they went? Did you think they went to heaven? They didn't go to heaven when they died. They went under. Because that's where paradise used to be. Oh, yeah. They went under because in hell, they stood. Oh, yeah. Lord, that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm going to just say it quickly. When Abraham died, where was the bosom of Abraham? They, went, they, were, in, they were the prisoners that he went to preach to. Because it was not the last station. They couldn't go to heaven. They couldn't go to heaven. They had to stay there. They, 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 we're in a place, some people call it paradise, but I, I'll show you in a minute. But I'm not even going to go into it, but I'm going to just say it here. When he went there, what was the preaching? I died. I rose again. I have set you free. He went to release them. Now, salvation has come. What the salvation, the prophet, where did you think Isaiah was? You know, I was telling you last week, but I'm going to have time to teach on that. I was telling you last week that when... It, you said, I was asking you, did Elijah die? You said, no. He was taken up by a chariot of fire. You think he went to heaven? No. He didn't go to heaven. They went to the same place. Because he was also one of the prisoners. <laughs> they were waiting for, the, for Jesus. Did you not hear what happened? When Jesus died, the grace opened. That's why Jesus cried. Eloi, Eloi, That cry that he let out, he opened the grave. Why? Because they need, uh, they need to get in their body, into their bodies again. What was that needed? Because that is the body that needs to be changed. Now, they opened the grave. That cry opened the grave. There was an earthquake. What did you mean? Because when Jesus, when Jesus went there and he defeated Satan and Abraham was looking at it, hey! If that was not the case, where was the thief? Sorry, not the thief. If that was not the case, remember, mm -hmm. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love the word of God. Remember that when Jesus went there, you remember the thief and La 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 Lazarus and the chief and the rich man. And he said to Lazarus, oh, I can see them. I can see Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. And they were talking. There was a gulf where they could see them. L is beneath the earth. L is under the earth. Enoch was also there. Let me just say this quick because of time. Enoch was in the same place. The Bible says he was, Enoch was what? Translated. That you should not see that. It's just a different kind of death. They were all dead. They all died. Moses died to be. Moses went to the same place. They didn't go to heaven. What's the next one I told you? Elijah. Elijah too went to the same place because they all saw. What happened when Jesus defeated Satan? They all saw it. Ah, wow, this is beautiful. Now, Jesus opened them up. Now, let's go. Remember the thief on the right hand. What did Jesus say to him? What did Jesus say to him? Today, you will be with me. Today, comma, you will be with me in paradise. Watch. He didn't say heaven. You will be with me in paradise. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So when Jesus went down, he put him in the, he says, um, <laughs> uh, look on, over here. Stay, that's it. I'm just, so if you're looking, don't, don't mind it. But he just put him there. Look on, stay here. Let me set this Satan out. He put him in paradise there. And he dealt with Satan. After dealing with Satan, then he took, yeah, let, come on, let's go. Now, because he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And Jesus is not going to heaven. When he died, he went to hell for three days before he was raised up. I will share this on a, on, on, on a, on a, on a more, you know, another time in, in details. But when he went there and he lost them, did you know read in the Bible that people saw Abraham in Israel? People saw them. People saw Moses. Because the Bible says, when, ah, they, they, the Bible says they saw the saints. And they brought, he brought them to the holy city. And they, ah, oh, Joshua! They could recognize them. Because in the spirit, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the spirit, you recognize. If you were to caught up in this, if you were caught up in the spirit, now nobody will need to tell you that this is Abraham. You will know. And that's when he took them. It was after that incident that Jesus now took them. Remember when he showed up, he says to Mary, Don't touch me, for I have not ascended to the Father. Ah. That's what happened. Then he took them all to heaven. But the person that told us that, this was his reality. He said that I may know him. If he did not seek God like that, we will not know these details now. But because of his seeking, because it was right, he was able to tell us. What I'm telling you now is a surprise. Many, because many people have never heard it. Now, the question is, what gospel have we been hearing all this time? What have we been hearing about the gospel? These are the things you hear in the word of God. You say, my good, I need to study that word myself. Because it say, what did I say earlier in 1 Peter 1, 12? He said, he went and prayed to the spirits in prison. Why is he preaching to them? He said they were in prison. They couldn't go to heaven. What they, the word prison does not mean that they were locked up. No, it means that they were held there until that time. They couldn't go, but they were left there. All of them were left there. Ah, I came in the right generation. Come and say, I came in the right generation. Lift, lift up your right hand and say, I came in the right generation. I came in the right generation. Hallelujah. There's two types of seeking. Number one. Je Je Jeremiah 29 verse 13. Jeremiah 29 13. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search me for me with all thine heart. Okay? Go to Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. And I'm, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold, behold, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Everything that you said there, I didn't mean to share, but I just needed you to know that. If you know that part in your scripture, it will change your understanding of the gospel. You will know that Jesus wasn't playing games when he said you are free. I was found, I am sought of them that asked not for me. I am fond of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. What is that? The first seeking falls into the first category. You, This one, if you are saved and in Christ Jesus, you don't need this one. This is salvation. He was seeking to the Israelites, the Jews, that they will seek me and find me when you have sought me with all of your heart. The second type of seeking is the search of alignment. That's what I call it. The search of alignment. The search of alignment with God. Matthew 6, 33. He says, seek first. Did you see? He qualified it. Seek ye first. First. The kingdom of God. Where is that kingdom? That kingdom is in your heart now. And his righteousness. Don't just seek the kingdom. Seek it the right way. And his righteousness. Seek it rightly. What did I say earlier? Our seeking of God is wrong. Seeking the kingdom rightly. And his righteousness. And all these things. Shall be added to thee. Seeking the kingdom and the rightness of that kingdom. You want to do it right. That's what he's saying. Seeking the kingdom rightly. Someone said to me, Pastor, I want to go into that church that I, 
that I was in, and, and I want to tell the people. I, I want to bring all the people. I, I want to go there and, and, and bring the people here. I said, don't worry about that. Don't, 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 don't leave the people. You, 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 say, you came here, you found the truth. It's okay. Stay here. Don't go and be, bring those people. If I would have said yes to that, I said, come on, go and get them, brother. Come on, go get them. That is not right. I would have been doing the wrong thing to do to say, oh yeah, go get them. Ah, let's come on, get, get them in. No, it's not about that. If I did that, it's wrong in the eyes of God. So I should be telling him, he says, I, uh, we, what I found here, this is beautiful. Oh, I'm doing well. I said, brother, you just go, forget those people. Let them, when they, God will reveal to them what, where they need to be. Why was I saying that? Because of the rightness. Leave them. We are not after crowds. It's not about crowd. It's about building the kingdom. And where's the kingdom built? In your heart. What I just told you there, it's been built in your heart. It's been built in your heart. Imagine you know that. He went and he defeated Satan in hell. Satan was defeated. You are no longer under his hold. This seeking of alignment, it brings you into alignment with your destiny, your purpose, and so on. Why seek? The Bible says in James 4 verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You must take the initiative. God does not take the initiative. You take the initiative. God said to Elijah, Elijah, go and show yourself to Ahab. I want to send rain. That's what God said. But after that, the Bible says Elijah went up to the roof and he was praying. He was telling the servant, go and check. Go and check. Why was he praying? God already told him that I want to send rain. Why, why was the sending of the rain dependent on his prayer? Because you have to do the seeking. And those are the things people have not been taught. Because God said it, yeah, yeah, he said it. You don't do nothing? No. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 1, 18, you are supposed to do warfare with prophecy. Warfare you do with prophecy. You trivialize what you don't, what you find easily, you trivialize it. What is given to you without any effort, you trivialize it. You don't, you don't really value what you don't work for. The, the Holy Ghost is calling you, child of God. The cost is seeking. If you are praying and you have not found it, keep, keep, keep seeking. I'm talking about with regards to the will of God. Remember Daniel? Daniel was praying. He didn't find, there was no answer. In Daniel 10, 12, the Bible says, the, king, uh, the angel said to him, the king of Persia withstood me. Who do you know is withstanding what... what uh, what is happening there? He says, the king of Persia withstood me. How many days? 21 days. If Daniel had given up praying, would he have known that? No, he wouldn't have found it out. Anything you hear that makes sin sweet is not from God. And anything you hear that does not drive you for more of Christ Jesus is not the gospel. How to grow now? How to grow? I'm going to go fast on this. I, I just hope to finish it today. How to grow? I'm telling you, this teaching right here, go over it over and over again. Go over it. Go on the page. Go, go on the page and listen over and over. You, you're going to need it. How to grow? Number one. Create a culture of seeking God intimately. Create a culture of seeking God intimately. Under that heading. Ayala man takili gada selebonde lebo suburunde kedia. Under that heading, let me give you a few points. Under that heading, because it's just that one. Go to church and serve. You see, the first is under that heading, go to church and serve. So it's not just sufficient that you go to church. You may say, but what's happened there? You see, in Psalm 73, 16 to 17, 
there were some things that were troubling for David. And he said to me, sorry, he said, when I thought about it, it was painful. It was too painful. He said, until I went into the sanctuary, then understood I their end. Imagine that. He said, when I went to the sanctuary, then I understood I their end. What is it? He was able to be shown in the sanctuary how to end spiritual apathy, how to end spiritual complacency, how to end affliction in his health. Different things that he did not know, he found it in the sanctuary. It could it'd be a physical affliction. Hebrews 10 25, it says, Don't be don't be like those who don't go there. Go to church in another season. Let that culture, I said, create a culture of seeking God intimately. I have done things so that I can do what I'm doing. I have I, I have paid in enormous sacrifice to do certain things. Why? Because I, I, I have to create that culture. You can't you can't play games all day. You you can't you can't have time for everything else and not have time for Jesus. You have time for everybody else, but you don't have time for God. That's not that's just not right. Go to Bible study. All the services are for your benefit. Somebody co doesn't come to any service. Bible study, no. Sunday service. Oh, well, if I can make Sunday service. That's not enough. Bible study is important. Why? When you go to school, why don't you tell them, I can only come on Monday. I'm not coming on Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Why do you not tell your school that? Don't you know this is a spiritual school? It's not. Listen, when you go to school, you expect to get a certificate. You can't come here and I teach you this word in a year and you don't know this Bible. You can't. You cannot. You cannot. If you get these things right, and I'm talking about our seeking our conviction, if you get it right, you cannot be confused. You can't, people can't put prophecies on Facebook and that messes you up. You cannot. If you give yourself to what I'm teaching here, it can't. But you see, this is where it, it, it is happening here. The seeking is wrong. We have not sought alignment in the heart. There's no, our heart is not correctly aligned. Our art is what? Not correctly aligned. You go to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, if you're in uni or, or tech, you go certain days. You don't say, ah, no. Because, you know, at your attendance is crucial to your success. It's not that you're not going to show up and then you say, oh, well, they understand. No. Why do you think it's different spiritually? It's not different spiritually. consistency for me did not start when I started pastoring. I created that culture long before I started pastoring. Long before that. I've always been like that in Nigeria. I didn't, I didn't get consistent in my work with God because I'm here. Let me tell you something. When I came here, if I was not consistent in my work with God in Nigeria, I, I would have died spiritually. I'm telling you, there's a systemic error in this land. And not just in, in this land. In when I call it systemic, it's not just Northern Ireland. It's in the nations, all over the world. If I was not burning in Nigeria before I came, if I was not consistent in my work with God, my spiritual life would have died in this country. I would have passed out. I know whose who spiritual life have, have died. And they can't even get it back up. No. No, I'm not in, the, I'm not in that category. I held on to Jesus. I said, no. My country is tropical region, so it's not temperate like here. You know, there, there, you don't have the cold. So there's many excuses to die spiritually. Um, that's what we're here for, to bring people back to life in their spirit. Come on, say I'm among them. See, I'm alive in the spirit. Create a culture of seeking God intimately. What did I say? Go to church regularly. Go to the church. Go to church regularly. Go there regularly. Go attend services. All the services are for your benefit. I used to be in my former church. I used to be going from from Bible study to work. I used to be doing that. That's what I did. You couldn't tell me off. You couldn't stop me from doing that because it was my for my benefit. They were not doing me a favor. I was I was doing myself a favor. Under that heading again, 
learn to pray. Listen, the first thing you need to learn in prayer is thanksgiving. When Jesus was teaching about prayer in Luke 11, he says, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Listen to me. I want you to learn the heart of thanksgiving. Thank God and thank people. Listen, if you are a grateful man, if you are a grateful woman, you will grow spiritually. Listen, lose this entitlement mindset. My entitlement. What are you entitled to? Listen to me. Even if it's your right to do it, I still should thank you. Even if you are supposed to do it, I still should say, thank you, brother. It's a culture you must create in prayer. You don't do that only when God answers your prayer. Father, I thank you this morning. Nothing has been done. I thank you that I saw a new day. That's the first thing you learn in prayer. Learn to pray in understanding and in the spirit. Don't just pray in the spirit. It's good. I do it. That's what I do the most in my life. But learn to pray in understanding. I have led a prayer before for three hours and a half in understanding. I was the only one praying. Father, I thank you today. I give you praise. I give you glory. You are a great God. I, I thank God for everything in the house. This was years ago now. At three and a half hours, I'm telling you. But it... <laughs> My grandmother was alive at the time. <laughs> she was so angry after that prayer. <laughs> but I'm telling you, learn to pray in understanding. If I asked you to pray in understanding, how would you pray? Uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. No, you, got, you need to learn. And that's what I'm showing you. The first thing to learn in prayer is how to thank God for everything in your life. The Bible says everything that has prayed, what? Praise God. Let everything that has breath think over the breath of life. The next thing. So, uh, on that, how rich is your prayer life? Start a culture of consistent praying. That's on that learn to pray. What do I mean? If you want to pray two hours in a day, if you cannot go full blast and, and like that, listen, partition your day. Early in the morning, get up. The first thing you do, okay, I'm going to do 20 minutes. You getting it? I'm going to do 20 minutes in the morning. Okay, when I wake up, what time do you go to school? Nine? Is that when you go to school? What time do you go to school? I just want to use a practical scenario. What time? I've eight. That's when they take you. Okay. So you, give, you, you have to be ready maybe an hour, half an hour, get breakfast and all that. If you wake up, so I used to work with young people, so there's a guy, used to, I used to have to get him up at half six. Okay, now, if you get enough for half six, you can wake up earlier and say, I'm going to get up for six. Listen, you're going to sleep plenty when you come back home. You can still study and sleep enough when you come back. Listen, you've been sleeping all night. 20 minutes will not do any bad to you. So wake up at six. When you give, wake up at six, lay back, if your house. Let me give you a practical example in my life. I used to be hostel, hostel chaplain in my university. I was the chaplain for the whole hostel. So, in the residence hall, what time did we have to pray? Six. So, I started getting about five. That's where I, I, that's where I learned that from. Five, I will be up. I have to pray an hour before I get them up. So, I pray for one hour. I pray in tongues. Then I get them and then I pray. Half an hour, half an hour. So, then I pray for people and this and that. Then I get them up at six. And do prayer and blah, blah, blah. We get ready to go to university. When I come back, 20 minutes or something, pray. You know, before I go to, you know, like that. It wasn't like at the time because of work, of um, school work and everything. And it was back to back. So, and I had commitment as well. Church and different things. I had to partition the time. Listen, this is how you create discipline in your life. This is how you create discipline. Let me tell you something. When I start my day like that, God is able to fix my schedule. If you start your day without God, you still won't, you'll be saying, ah, no, there's not enough time. There's not enough time. What is happening? Discipline is missing. 
Create 20 minutes. Our Father, I give you thanks. This lema katulama. Le kredu sapaya. La katakaru sapa. Le kataba. Listen, when you wake up, you may start like this. Le 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 bosa. La kakakaka kurude. Elu busete. Oh, la 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 la. Oh, because you're tired. You know, you're waking up. Oh, you're just coming. You know, is that cock that's just warming up? Le bodo. See, when I, when I was a chaplain like that, I would be in bed. Lo 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 bo shi. I'll do that for half an hour. But strength will come. After, ah, yalam, I will be on my neck. Okay, by I found that half an hour. Then I wake everybody up. How can I be a chaplain and I'm waking up at 6 a.m.? Ah, no discipline. What can you be in this life without discipline? If you're in the soldier, you don't serve by feeling, you serve by commitment. So, create that. I've just given you a practical example now. Do the same with the word of God. Do the same with the word of God. Just say to yourself, if the phone is distracting you, for goodness, please get the phone away and get something that will not be sending what's up. Ah, what's up? Ah, that's the update. Oh, Facebook. Oh, you, oh somebody posted. Oh. Put the phone away. Shut it down. And get something physical. Get paper Bible, if that will help you. And study. I have shared that. It's on video. It's on, on Facebook. How to study the Bible. Do the same with the word of God. Next, submit your body to God. As I close now. Romans 12. Romans 12 verse 1 to 2. I beseech you brethren, therefore, therefore brethren, by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What is that saying? And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen, somebody. What is that now? Submit yourself. You know, I said about if you uh, don't copy the culture of those who do not come to the house of God. The Bible says, as is the manner of some. He says, do not forsake the assembly of people. So in your mind you say I'm, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to the service today. I look at the weather. Oh, I'm not going. The Bible says don't copy it. You know what you do? How do you submit your the, your body? A living sacrifice. What's a living sacrifice? You know a sacrifice is supposed to be dead, but your own you are living. How do you submit it? You say to your body because this mouth controls your body. The sheep James three tells us the mouth controls it. The Bible says, a, a man without self-control, Proverbs 25, 28, is like a city whose walls has been broken down. So what do you do? You say to your body, body, I will go to church. Guess what? Your body will align. That's how you train your body. That's, you, so, you say, body, we have to obey the word. The word of God says, I have to be in church. I'm going. Child of God, so us, next thing, submit your body to fasting. When your body controls you, I was saying in our prayer earlier this morning, when your body is in control, child of God, you are a slave. When you want to pray and you can't pray, when you want to read the word of God and you can't read the word of God, you say, no, it's coffee time now. Oh, no, I can't pray. Uh, listen, I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. I, I read the word of God. Someone said, I read the word of God maybe Monday and then Friday. Ah, and you have been deceived. Do you, is that the way you eat? You eat in the morning, you eat in the afternoon. You, eat, you, you want extras. Yeah, yeah, let's order Chinese. But when it comes to the word of God, I'm not under, I'm, that's legalism to tell me that I have to read the word of God every day. It's not legalism. It's the sound doctrine that has been missing in the church for too long. Church, it is time for us to wake up. We must not give room to the devil. We are already giving room to the devil by not doing these things. Submit your body to fasting. No. Listen to me. If you can't fast, you're a slave. No excuses are enough. You cannot grow spiritually if you are not given to fasting. I'm telling you some doctrine. If you like, take it. If you like, don't take it. But I'm telling you the truth. If you want to grow, you must fast. I'm saying to preach the truth. And the truth is what sets free. If you don't tell people the truth, they can't be set free. They said to Jesus, why do your disciples not fast? He said, a time is coming, they will fast. And there were several times you saw it in scripture, fasting, fasting, fasting. 
Paul said in fastings often. That was the man that told us about grace. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And the man said in fastings often. What is often to you? Two days? No. In other words, it's all the time. It's fasting all the time. It's often. You can't even measure it. Give yourself to fasting. We do it in this church. We don't do it for a show. We do it to create opportunities for you to grow. Why do we have Bible study? Why do we have prayer house? It's for you. We are called to bring men to intimacy. You can't grow. Someone said that fasting is like spice to food. If you're, can you, have you, anybody here, now, nah, we, we have to tell the truth now. Anybody here, you have cooked a soup without, you forgot the salt. Hands up. Have you done it? You've done it? You forgot the salt. It was a mistake. You forgot it. You forgot it. I have done it. You've never done it. You've never cooked anything. Okay, do this. Did you forget the sauce anytime or you didn't put enough or it was too much? Okay, right. You've been somewhere around there. Okay, now. All right. We have some level of agreement. Now, now listen now. You know the seeking that I told you earlier that seeking God for alignment, if that seeking is missing, it's like your work with God is lacking salt. What did that food taste like to you? It, it, there was no taste. Uh huh. What happened? Nobody, you said, no, something is missing. That's what happened. This is happening in a lot of people's life in their work with God. Something is missing. What is it? I'm telling you now. Well, something is missing. Ah, I don't know what is uh, Something is missing. That is it. That is seeking. It's the search of alignment with God. Alignment of our heart. Zakamatala Bayasia. And this year, I'm saying, the fasting, you can't grow if you don't fast. You can't. You struggle to grow. If you want to really grow, I'm not giving you a fasting diary of fast 10 days. No, I'm just saying, create the culture of it. Every now and again, you just, I need to fast. Maybe once a week, we have that. On Wednesdays, once a week. I just do that. I can do Wednesday. Yeah. I just create that. Do you know, I was talking to an unbeliever. Unbeliever. He said to me, I fast three days a week. I said, what did you just say? He said, I fast three days a week. He said, just for no sickness. He said, just for, because the, he says, doctor says that his health is, for, is good for your health. I said, unbelievers are telling me that they can't fast. What did he just say to me? He's an unbeliever. He doesn't go to church. He says, fast. Oh, he said, I do that often. He said, I mean, he said, three days a week, I do that. He said, I don't eat until five. Now, all of that I've mentioned, go to church and serve, and serve, learn to pray, submit your body, all of that to make it most effective, had this last one. All of the above that I've mentioned, all of it, the thing that makes it more effective is the one I'm about to mention. Do all the above passionately. Ey, can you please come and stand over there? Just now, what be mind with the camera? Just, just bend down. Uh, yeah, okay, it's okay. It's okay. There. I want to use it for a practical uh, uh, example right there. Now, look at Mark. Mark. In Luke 10, 25 to 27, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Okay? I want, uh, he says that in Matthew, Luke 10, 25 to 27, Matthew 22, 36. But I want us to look for, I want us to look at Mark 12. I want us to look for, l go with Mark. Mark's account. And one of the scribes came and haven't heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had Answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, Lord, the, the, the first commandment, uh, Lord, the, the Lord is our God, the Lord is the God. Verse 30, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Watch this now, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Wait. Meaning there is a way to what? Love. There is a what? A way to love. Okay. When you sing, sing passionately. 
when you pray, pray passionately. This is why you, when I, I there's so, I'm, there is, it does something. Passionate. Watch, watch this now. Hi. Um, hello. It, does, it, does it lack emotion? Right? Hi. Hi. Different people have greeted you like that. Do you not find something wrong when someone that you're really close to have done? Hi. Your best buddy now. Do you not know? Ah, I have to ask him something. Something's wrong here. Have you, have you not had the case you say, mate, what happened? What happened there? What happened there? Why? Because you know his greeting. What? It was unusual. That's what many of us, that's what we serve, how we serve God. It lacks passion. It lacks emotion. Can you imagine the way you were singing this morning? Do you know why we we're also able to get along with your praise? Because you were not singing there and saying, what was the song you sang? Uh, give me one of the songs you sang now. What, what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God. Would you get along in that praise? Would you be part of that praise like that? You will say, well, I better be true. I better look at my phone as well because I don't know what is happening this morning. What is happening? Emotion is lacking. When you go to church, go passionately. Don't go like, oh, they forced me now to come home. No. It's not acceptable before God. When you give, give passionately to God. When you do anything for God, let it carry passion. He said you will love the Lord of God with all your might, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. What is it? Because if your soul, if your love is lacking emotion, it's not true love. Hi. He went, hi. How you doing? It doesn't mean I have to be there within 10 minutes. But it carries a level of emotion that makes you see, I, I work with young people, right? You know the amount of young people that have said, oh, that one is here for the money. You know why? Their work was lacking emotion. Thank you, why? Their work, they, they, were, they are being paid, but it lacked emotion. They said that one. Why? Could, children could tell that this stuff is genuine. That stuff is genuine. Oh, that one. Uh. But what I'm saying, let your service to God not be lacking in what? Emotion. Add your emotion to it. Listen to me. If you lose your mind for Jesus, it's better than lose your mind for Man United or Liverpool. Don't lose your mind for them. Lose your mind for Jesus. Let's arise on our feet. Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Is risen upon you. Is risen upon you. When you sing songs like when you want when you when you when you want to when you want to pray don't sing songs like arise shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you that song i've just sang there is it not a good song it is but it doesn't impact on your emotions right now watch this song i'm about to sing so close i believe you're holding me now in your hands. I belong. You never let me go. So close. Would that drive you to pray? Would that song make you pray? That's what I'm saying. Sing songs that will encourage you to pray. So close I believe. You're holding me now in your hands. I belong. You never let me go. Things like that. That's what I'm saying. Lift your hands and begin to give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Magnify the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Say, I am growing. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am creating today. A culture of seeking God intimately. Of going to church regularly. And serving. Learning to pray rightly. With gratitude in my heart, I submit my body. Come on, say, I submit my body to God. I submit my body to fasting. I submit my body today. I serve God passionately. Come on, talk to Him, talk to the Lord. 
You may have to repent if you have to. Say to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Kadema lia brakuska libra, roska lebria lia braguska libra doska, la braguska libia do doska, bar robos kele bando robos setlebo, raga da 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 bar basse kede bar robos kodebo, rega de 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 basse kele libra dosa bariabo, belu brakatele brakus. Come on, mede de bosa taya, raga de de bosa laba, beru sabale, beru sabale, beru sabale. Come on, mele la bosa bariaba la brade ya la katu la bala basse kede bo, bariaba de de bosa de bo. Hey, come on, say, Lord, I, must, I, I receive renewal strength. Come on, say that to the Lord. Say, I receive renewal strength this morning. I receive renewal strength. I receive renewal strength. By the Holy Ghost. My strength is renewed right now. My strength is renewed. In the name of Jesus. For everyone that is joining us this morning wherever you are i pray that your strength is renewed right now i pray that god takes you to another level in your growth in your walk with the lord hey every everything that has hindered your growth and your search of alignment let it be taken out of you right now let those things be cut away. Let them be cut out. Let them be cut out right now by the Spirit of the Lord. Hey, we speak your blessing over everyone today. We speak your blessing. The blessing of the Lord over you today. Over your spirit. I bless your spirit. I bless your soul. Your mind will and emotion i call them blessed i call your body blessed every area where the body has been in control receive strength right now to dominate your body receive strength right now to put the body under to crucify the body and walk with the lord on in the name of jesus christ i cast away i cast off every demonic influence on your mind let it be broken every wrong mindset by the blood of jesus i flush them out i pull them strong goes in your mind anything that is fighting your spiritual growth i break their power i receive ability of the spirit to fast to pray to seek the lord like never before to seek the lord and properly align with his purpose for your life in the name of jesus you will not miss it you will be aligned in god's purposes in the name of jesus christ of nazareth oh you are blessed today you are blessed today this week that you're stepping into you are stepping into plenty abundance you are stepping into a new fire in your walk with the lord no longer will you be sloppy in your walk with god no longer will you just you you be uh, will you will you deal with apathy and complacency but you will be bold you will be strong and courageous and jesus will be on your lips all the days of your life you will not go back but you have cause to keep pressing on in your walk with the lord in the name of jesus keep praying if you're there this morning and you have not known jesus as lord and savior you need to know him today don't wait till tomorrow ask him today to come in your heart say this prayer with me say oh lord god i am sorry i know i'm a sinner i ask for alignment today i know jesus died for me on the cross i believe that he died I confess Jesus Christ today as the Lord of my life. Today I receive salvation and the gift of eternal life. I declare that I'm born again. I declare that I'm born of God. Apathy is gone out of my life. Complacency is gone out of my life. I am restored in my walk with God. I am restored today no more complacency i focus today on jesus the author and the finisher of my faith in the name of jesus if you said that prayer i congratulate you you are blessed and highly favored today and his grace is increasing continually in your life in the name of jesus oh father i thank you for this one bless them mightily in jesus name we want to give we want to give if you're giving your tithe and your offering, the tithe is a tenth of what the Lord has blessed you with, we give it in honor to the Lord. Your offering is a show of appreciation. It's a reflection of the blessings of God in your life. 
You give because you are blessed. And when you do, the Bible says, give it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. Luke 6, 38. Shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. Father, I thank you for everyone that's given. If you are given online, there's a link. Give passionately. Give from a heart of love. Don't give like, well, I just, no, give it with a willing heart. Plan your giving. Plan it. Don't be, ah, what, what, what have I got left there? You know, we don't give God leftovers. He's not a beggar. We give him from our heart passionately. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. You are faithful. You are awesome. We give you praise today. I bless every one of your children that is given. I pray that they will increase financially. Those who desire to give, but are just learning it today. I pray that they will always have something to give. A culture that seeks the Lord passionately, Father. We ask from this house, Watchman Fellowship Center, that that systemic error will be corrected in the body of Christ. That we will seek the Lord for who he is, not for what we want to get. No, we are not the type that seeks God for what we want to get. We are the ones that walk on water. We walk in the supernatural because we know God for who he is. And we will serve Jesus all the days of our life. We, we are not among the ones that go back. No, we are the ones that pursue Jesus consistently. We are never tired. Our strength is continually renewed in the name of Jesus. Child of God, there's a blessing waiting for you financially this week. In this new, I'm telling you, somebody, this week, you see it. This week, you will see a major blessing in your life financially. Can somebody receive that? I can hear an amen. Ah, you now you, you make sure you testify and make sure you give. <laughs> Honor the Lord with it. Father, thank you. Someone say I increase continually and abundantly. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. For everyone that joined us online, thank you for joining us. We'll be back in the evening at half six for a fresh word from the Lord. Be blessed and don't, don't stop praying. We'll see you at half six in the evening. Have a blessed Sunday. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.